There's something about the start of a new year that makes us assess our lives and try to make a few changes. The trouble is, many of us set ourselves up for failure by setting unrealistic goals. Libby Gill is the author of Traveling Hopefully, How to Lose Your Family Baggage and Jumpstart Your Life. CNN's Carol Lynn recently talked with her about New Year's resolutions. I think New Year's is, an, is a pretty arbitrary time to set resolutions. I much prefer that they happen year-round, but in my work, it's really about helping people find that intersection between personal, personal passions and professional ambitions, and it's really about setting measurable and specific goals, not just big, fuzzy New Year's resolutions, mm -hmm. but goals that you can measure, you know when you'll achieve them. Mm -hmm. All right, let's say one of the big ones that I hear a lot is, I'm going to lose weight this year. All right, I'm going to lose weight and I'm going to find love in my life. I'm going to find a partner that's, that's going to be a lasting relationship. Those are exactly the two that I hear all the time. Well, first of all, when you set a New Year's resolution, most people frame it as a negative. It's about stopping something, quitting something, losing something, which is such a subtle or not so subtle way of beating up on yourself, of finding fault, of looking and focusing on your uh, shortcomings. This is what I didn't do last year, so this yeah. is what's got to change. Yeah, this is what I've been doing wrong all these years, and now I've got to fix it, and here's how. And it's not setting yourself up for success. It's setting you up for failure and reminding you about how flawed you are as a okay. human being. So what do you do? What do you what do? I, say? Go ahead. I pick a theme. I don't pick a resolution. I pick a theme instead. So my theme is what I want to really address for the year in a much broader scope. So what I, my theme for the year is I invite abundance. Now, that may seem like a no-brainer because, you know, who does not want abundant health and wealth mm -hmm. and all the good things in life, but for me, it's really a sense of, it's a message to myself that I don't have to make everything happen. I don't have to push so hard. I can allow some things to flow in. I can let things come to me. All and right, then so under, if there are specific goals, Libby, like losing weight or getting, a, uh, getting married, Yes. Okay. what do you tell those people? All right, so if you're going to have your specific goal, then ask yourself two questions. First question, are you passionate about that goal? Is it deeply meaningful? Does it really fit you? Do you care about it? It's for not me, a task. It's not just a task or a check. Right. It's not okay. any tech. And is it important? For years, I thought, I'm going to run a marathon. And then when I realized I couldn't run 26 blocks, let alone 26 <laughs> miles, I had no interest in that. I wasn't passionate. Uh -huh. So I switched my fitness goals and found something that addressed that idea of fitness, but in a way that was meaningful to me. That's the first test. The second goal setting test is ask yourself, is it within my power to accomplish? Can I make this goal happen? Mm -hmm. So if you say, I want to win the lottery, I want to marry a millionaire, well, maybe that one is within your goal. I, but <laughs> something, it has to be within your power. You have to be able to make it All happen. Right. Go back to your fitness goal. When people say, I want to lose 20 pounds, maybe you can make that happen and maybe you can't. But if you reframe it, as a specific and measurable step that's within your power, uh -huh. you can say, I'm going to exercise. I'm going to get on the treadmill for one hour three times a week. Ah. That is absolutely that's something manageable. Your power. All right. I get right. it. Libby, right. Happy New Year. Thanks so much. Thank you.